Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? That's gonna be fun to untangle. All my orchids slid down to the wrong side of the pole. Okay, I hope you're good. I'm great. Let's talk about mold. This is a video that I've actually been wanting to do for a while, but I had to grow the mold first, otherwise there was really wouldn't be much to talk about or show for the video. This is one of my little Kokedema terrariums that I did, I don't know, a few weeks ago probably. It is just a thriving mold factory, which is perfect for right now. This has been difficult for me. I had to go against all of my instincts and just let it grow so that we could talk about it. Oh, and this is the good side. Look at how much mold's over here. Lots and lots of mold. Yes, there's plenty of stuff to work with here. So mold happens for various reasons. Loves a nice moist environment. So a terrarium is just like, prime prime territory for them i don't usually have big problems with mold in terrariums that actually have like a false bottom and whatnot in them and that's partially because i make sure to have everything very sterile in the beginning that can make a world of difference this particular terrarium is uh, well obviously different in that case and mold is sometimes just an issue with house plants in general sometimes you'll get a plant and you'll have a soil that just for some reason is very mold prone it probably has lots of organic compounds in it just something that is making that mold want to grow there but whatever the case what i do in this terrarium also applies just fine for regular houseplant use so typically the first thing i would do when i see mold in a terrarium is uh, just take that lid off There's too much moisture in there let things dry out normally when i do a terrarium i actually will sometimes wait a day or two sometimes three or four before i put the lid on because things are extra extra moist on the inside or sometimes i get impatient and i don't but typically uh, things are at their most wet right after planting right so that's why i'll leave the lid off for a few days before i put the lid on and start just letting it kind of have its own little ecosystem this terrarium has a little reservoir down here with plenty of water in it and there's a slight layer you can see the water comes up to right about here i haven't had to add any water to this it stayed wet this entire time once mold has reached really extreme levels like you see in here just removing the lid isn't typically going to do the trick at least not very quickly so uh, there are some other things that can be done always a good idea to have some peroxide laying around just in case it's good for obviously first aid kits but there are actually a lot of uses for peroxide with our plants too peroxide works really well for getting the mold off of these things it helps bring oxygen into the root systems it's great for flushing out soils and sanitizing soils but for something like this I'm just keeping it really simple. I'm just going to take one of these cotton swabs right here. And I usually like to kind of rough it up a little bit on the tip so it's a little bit fluffy and frilly. That way I have something to just kind of use sort of like a paintbrush. And I'll put just a squirt of pro... Okay, there's a seal in there. There we go. I mean, that makes sense. Oh, it didn't occur to me to take that off. So I'll put just a little bit of peroxide in a container. And then I will come on in with my little cotton swab right here. Get that nice and saturated. And I just start to dab it onto the mold. That's all fine. Works great for a small application. Spot removing the mold. Just taking the little cotton swab, dabbing it around in there. Kills the mold off it's not going to hurt the plant as long as it's in small amounts otherwise you want your peroxide to be diluted which is what i'm going to do next because this is not a small project there's a lot of mold in here so i'm going to actually dilute this into something where i can drop that entire coco dema into it and give it just a quick soak over here i have a pitcher with just about four cups of water in it give or take a smidge i wasn't really too careful with measuring that out that's what i'll be soaking the coco dema in but first i have to make that solution typically the ratio that i've always used for mold bacteria fungus stuff like that is about one to 32. one cup to every uh 32 cups which is two gallons of water so what's that mean math time so that would be 32 cups is two gallons to one so then one gallon would be 16 cups which would be half a gallon and then half of a gallon would be eight cups <laughs> which would be a quarter cup to that and then i have four cups here so that would be an eighth of a cup okay all right sorry that was may have been annoying i have to do the math out loud sometimes and my measuring cup here only goes down to a quarter of a cup so i measured out roughly half a quarter of a cup and milliliters what i don't know i'm sorry metric peoples I'll just go ahead and pour that in here then i'll just take this entire moss ball and i'll drop it in there i'm going to give that just a little while to soak typically 
as long as the peroxide's diluted properly, that's not going to do any damage to your plant. Doing a soak is kind of extreme, but I do feel like with the amount of mold that's on there, it's probably necessary in this case. This is only a useful tip if the mold is growing on your moss ball, right? If this were a potted plant, then I would do the same thing right here, but water that into the soil until it flushes out of the bottom and make sure it's not sitting in a drainage dish because you want that peroxide water to flush through. And uh, I usually would do that one to three times. The peroxide actually will help oxygenate the area around the roots. So as long as it's not too strong, like you don't want to use this in its pure state, obviously. Having it watered down though can work really well. If this were just your terrarium, then uh, watering it in with a peroxide solution, not a good idea because there's no drainage. So if that's the case, then use the cotton swab that's probably going to be the best bet. And then real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and actually do the peroxide on the top of all of these rocks here, and then I'll give it a good rinse in the house. You can see what that peroxide does. See all the bubbles and everything moving around in there? That's hydrogen peroxide in action. So while this is fizzing and bubbling and doing its thing, let's talk about things that are a little bit more practical because this probably isn't your terrarium setup. Also useful to have some isopropyl alcohol laying around. This is really nifty for sanitizing the terrariums. You just put some on a paper towel or whatever you want to use, wipe down the sides of everything. This is best to do before you plant it up. I usually give my terrariums a really good soak and some soapy water before I plant them up. I make sure that I'm using a fresh potting mix, a fresh blend. Doesn't always happen that way. Like the soil blend I used for this setup right here had been sitting around for a few days, and then I did notice that there were fungus gnats in here. Uh, but the peroxide is going to take care of that issue. It's going to take care of the issue here on the moss ball and as well in the terrarium. It's going to kill off the eggs and the larvae and whatever's living in there, essentially. Uh, like I had mentioned, ideally from the start of the terrarium, we're working with some pretty sanitary conditions. Sometimes it doesn't, like you can do everything in the world, unless you have a clean room, which most people do not have a true, 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 like lab setting type clean room. Then uh, uh, if a mold spore gets in there, then you're going to have some mold. It happens sometimes. Get the lid off of there so that it can breathe and let some of that moisture out. Things are too moist, typically, if there's a lot of mold growing inside of a terrarium. Sometimes the moisture level can be just right, and you still get a little bit of mold. And then, you know, use the cotton swab with the peroxide. That'll take care of that really, really, really easily. And uh, make sure you're using a clean potting mix. That helps a lot. Oh yeah, should have pointed it out. The other reason that I was soaking this moss ball isn't just because it's covered in more mold than I think would be practical takeoff with the cotton swab, but I just mentioned the fungus gnats. So this solution is going to help kill off any eggs or larvae that are in there that was that was the, I forgot to make the point. That's what the, that's what the point was. Killing off those fungus gnats and the mold. Because this moss ball is so moisture retentive, having it inside that terrarium, I don't think is going to be practical when I need to get the outside dried off to help combat the mold for right now. So for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in this dish right here, just so that it has a few days to dry. But I know practicality wise, this isn't applicable to most terrariums because most people actually have the things planted in their terrarium. You can't just take them out and do this. This is the only example I could come up with for the video because it's the only thing where I've had the mold growing. So that's just what I'm doing with this. Once the outside of it dries, I'll go ahead and get it back in there. And of course, beforehand, I'll get all these rocks out, throw them in a colander, give them a really good wash and make sure that they're nice and sanitized. And then I will not keep as much water in this in the future. In fact, I may keep no water in it and just allow the moisture from the moss ball to be what keeps things hydrated in there. It's sort of an experiment. I'll have to play around with that a little bit and see what goes on. And I did want to mention with the peroxide, the ratio I gave for doing a soil flush over, over here, that thing I did there, that is a ratio for a soil flush. That's not the same ratio you would necessarily use for absolutely everything. There are lots of websites out there that will break that down. It's a lot to go into. So uh, I, I don't want this point of this video to be how to use peroxide for absolutely everything. That would take a really long time. But the ways that I just covered, I think are probably the most common and the most practical and useful. I have put the peroxide into a spray bottle before. If there were a, like a surface that were really just covered in it, or there was a fungus net issue and uh, sprayed the surface down, give it a little while, like, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 minutes. And then I would flush it through with clean water after that to get all the nastiness and everything drained out. Again, in a terrarium, you have to be more careful because you don't have the drainage, right? So uh, you need to be very cautious and make sure that you're diluting it well 
just to be safe. But if you're using a cotton swab like I did in the beginning, then that's totally fine. Just go around and just wipe that mold with the cotton swab that has a peroxide on it. That's not likely going to hurt anything. General hydrogen peroxide is typically a very safe thing to use around your plants. So really quick breakdown of everything I just said. If you have mold in your terrarium, not like with the moss ball situation, but you know, an actual terrarium that's closed with a lid and whatnot and doesn't have any drainage, then go ahead and open it up so there can be some airflow. And if having that airflow in there for, I would say like give it a couple days and the mold isn't spreading, then you're probably okay and you can leave it. And usually that situation will settle itself down on its own. If it doesn't, then the peroxide on the cotton swab works really well. Or if you don't have the patience and you don't want to have that lid open, you can always try just going in and then getting the mold off with the cotton swab. Whatever works for you is fine. Typically, the first thing I do, though, is I just take the lid off and let things dry out for a few days and see if that helps. If it's not spreading, then usually problem solved and just give it a little while and the mold will die off on its own and then everything will start to kind of adjust on its own if the problem is persistent and uh, using the peroxide and having better airflow inside the terrarium uh, less moisture essentially if that still isn't solving the problem then it doesn't hurt to go ahead and pull uh, any large rocks or sticks or anything that's basically in there that you can take out and sanitize get those out of there get them sanitized cleaned off dried off put them back and see if that helps. Yeah, the mold usually shouldn't be that big of an issue. If it is that big of an issue where no matter what you do, it just keeps coming back. And the best thing to do, it, it kind of sucks, but it might be best to break that terrarium down and start over with a new fresh clean soil and get the whole thing sanitized and sterilized. Just give whatever you're using a nice soak with some soaping water, give it a good rinse. You can give it a rub down with some of the rubbing alcohol or peroxide, just whatever you want to use to sanitize and just rinse it well let it dry out and start over. Sometimes that's the only thing you can do. Mold issues aren't usually to that kind of an extreme, but it does happen sometimes. And then when that happens, that's probably just because there was some really funky soil in there or some or other type of material, like I said, rocks, sticks, whatever you have in there, something in there that makes the mold grow very prolifically. It's not something to panic over. Sometimes it's just part of an adjustment phase. That's why, like I said, since sometimes it's just a matter of things adjusting and stabilizing on their own and just basically it, a balance forming within the terrarium. You know, there's a lot of things going on with bacteria and fungus and whatnot inside of the terrariums if you're doing a bioactive terrarium, especially. What are some things that you guys do to get rid of mold in your plantings? Are you struggling with molds for various reasons? Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions are always appreciated. It helps us all learn and grow together. I'm kind of fascinated and really been enjoying watching the bubbles in this. Oh, and if you're wondering how long I'm going to be allowing this to soak i'm pretty much just going to wait for it to stop bubbling and that means the peroxide the hydrogen peroxide has done its thing and all that's left in here is water and then i'll go ahead and give it a rinse like i said comment down below love talking to everybody and hearing your suggestions and what's going on with your plants and your gardens all my social media link down below i use instagram more than anything else and if you haven't already you could like the video it makes a big difference for the channel and i appreciate it and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell that way you know when new videos come out all right well, i'm gonna get this inside to dry off it'll take forever out here in the growth space it's very humid so i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye